because one of my philosophies as far as um, giving online lessons is you want to try to do your best with the limited resources that you have to try to create an experience that is at least as good, uh, if not even better than what you would have in a face-to-face lesson. You're watching Tim Topham TV, the piano teaching podcast. So this is episode number 53. Well, hello and welcome back everyone to today's episode of the Piano Teaching Podcast. Today's episode is continuing our theme of online teaching. And today we're going to take your online lessons to the next level with my very special guest, Mario Ahero. In last week's episode number 52, if you haven't listened to that, we talked about uh, getting started using Skype and FaceTime to uh, begin this process of uh, online lessons. Today, we're going to go into far more depth and give you some uh, other tools that you can use to really enhance your online lessons. And we'll talk about some of those features in just a moment. But before we dive in, I did want you to check out Learn to Teach Music Lessons on Skype by Melody Payne. If you want to be the most forward thinking and trend setting teacher in your area, if you're looking to increase your client base, teaching hours and income, and if you need a perfect solution to cut down on makeup lessons, then teaching online is for you. Learn to Teach Music Lessons on Skype is a video course that will help you develop the online studio you've always wanted. You'll discover what equipment you need for teaching online, as well as exactly how to set it up for the optimal online teaching and learning experience. You'll also be introduced to policies, payment options, valuable teaching tips, other hints, a list of the pros and cons of online teaching and more, so that you can begin teaching online lessons confidently and professionally in the right way. Learn to Teach Music Lessons on Skype also includes exclusive access to a private Facebook community with other online teachers where you can ask questions, share video clips, and chat about your online teaching experiences. Learn to Teach Music Lessons on Skype will answer your questions about online music lessons. It'll help you gain the practical knowledge, skills, and confidence you need to start teaching online today and show you how to enhance your studio, maximize those teaching efforts that you work so hard at to set your studio apart and take it to the next level. So head to the show notes page to get a very special discount code and a link to find out more about Melody's fantastic course, Learn to Teach Music Lessons on Skype. Today's show notes are at timtopham.com forward slash episode 53. So my guest today is Dr. Mario Ahero. He's an internationally recognized authority in technology and piano pedagogy. He's been invited as a presenter and performer at every major piano pedagogy conference in the United States, including the MTNA and the National Conference on Keyboard Pedagogy and the Group Piano and Pado Piano Pedagogy GP3 Forum. Dr. Ahero has been a featured presenter for the Summer Summit at the Royal Conservatory in Toronto and was a keynote speaker for the 2013 Australasian Piano Pedagogy Conference, which is actually where we first met. In addition to authoring numerous articles for Clavier Companion and American Music Teacher, Dr. Ahero is Professor of Piano and Keyboard Area Coordinator at Stephen F. Austin State University in Texas. In the interview today, which was just fantastic fun uh, because Mario is such an advanced user of all this online technology, uh, I really enjoyed it because he actually shares his screen and shows us what he's actually doing with the technology and what's actually possible. So you'll actually see some things I've never seen done quite so easily before with uh, online keyboards playing as he plays the music, including his face uh, on the screen too, and an example of a score uh, when he plays the piano, the notes kind of flash up. Like the things that you can do now are fantastic. And one of the great problems that's solved by some of the technology we talk about in regard to online teaching is that issue with lag and with sound quality. And all of that can be avoided by some of the tricks and the software that we're gonna be talking about today in our session. We've got a heap of links available on the show notes page today. So if you're interested in the mic stand that Mario uses or the little clips or anything at all, we've got links for them in today's show notes. That's at timtopham.com slash episode 53. And as I mentioned, we've also now got full transcripts and full video, and I would recommend you grab the video for this episode available on the show notes page. If you're an Inner Circle member, you'll be able to find these resources in the members area. So let's get straight into our discussion today. I think you're going to really enjoy my interview with Dr. Mario Ahero. Here he is. Well, welcome, Mario, to the show. It's so good to have you on here finally. 
No, thanks. Uh, it's great seeing you there. It's been, well, I saw you in, in CKP uh, last year there, and then uh, it's great uh, that we can still connect here uh, uh, thousands of miles away. I know, different time zones, different seasons. Uh, and it was great. You came to the Australian Piano Pedagogy Conference um uh, what two, three, four years ago, <laughs> something like that, uh, and I it was remember. Two thousand fifteen. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That, that was that was really a great experience there, and uh, um, had never traveled that far before, and uh, it was it was uh, it was a delight to meet all the Australian teachers, and um, uh, wish I had more time to stay a little bit longer there, but uh, there's always. Uh, hopefully an opportunity in the future. Absolutely. Well, look, you're known as Mr. Piano Technology, uh, internationally renowned as the specialist here. So it is really exciting for me to get you on the show because I know that you can help me learn a whole lot of stuff and all the people who are watching and listening. Um, so today we're going to talk more about this, the theme of online teaching and the technology that we can use for that. How did you originally get into focusing so much of your career on the technology of music teaching? Well, a lot of it was um, due to the amount of time I had on my hands as far as um, I was finishing up my um, doctoral degree at the University of Oklahoma, probably around 2005, 2006. And um, uh, I was looking for a job <laughs> as far as uh, I wasn't I wasn't here at Stephen F. Austin State University just yet. Um, but uh, I had a lot of time on my hands and I was uh, a, a, a wonderful procrastinator on trying to <laughs> not finish my dissertation there. And I just was really fascinated with the emergence, uh, the emergence of like social media and uh, YouTube and all this uh, online technology where just like little people could, you know, like uh, not necessarily make themselves famous, but at least make some kind of contribution. And uh, I was just really fascinated how... Um, you know, uh, we could all kind of have a voice uh, and, and reach out to people that we ordinarily wouldn't be able to reach out to. And um, I really didn't get into um, like teaching people online through um, uh, video conferencing yet at that particular point because the technology wasn't as widespread as it is here today. But I had seen some people posting up videos on YouTube and also creating their own video podcasts. And I, I thought that, well, I, I thought maybe I have something to contribute. So it was just kind of a, a thing that I, I got a little bit uh, interested in. I did started this video podcast, with, especially with Apple and iTunes um, promoting video podcasts. I thought it was a, it was a, a emerging technology that I thought uh, we definitely should explore here. And it's great seeing, you know, like uh, uh, people like you, Tim, that are uh, uh, carrying on and really delving into that uh, uh, that technology to reach out to other people here. Well, cheers. And yes, you were, I think you were the pioneer in many ways with your piano podcast, which is still there on iTunes. It's on iTunes, I think, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it's still there. I, I have to confess that I, I haven't really uh, devoted a lot of attention to it and certainly not anything like the way that you've created this whole um, series of, uh, of really valuable uh, interviews and, and, and uh, video podcasts for uh, teachers to uh, watch here. But, you know, I try to um, post up some, a lot of times now it's more just shameless plugs of my kids <laughs> <laughs> Play, playing through some technology that sometimes gets, gets more attention. Those seem to get more views than anything that I, I ever I post on my own there. But, um, yeah, I know hopefully it's... now things have kind of, uh, settled in a little as far as my career is concerned there, then uh, I might get back into the swing of things here. Yes. And we must congratulate you on your recent uh, promotion to professor professorship, which is really a, a huge move for someone in uh, in education like you. So congratulations. Yeah, no, I hear a lot of people who, who have a lot of, uh, um, you know, like tough times with administration, but uh, the administration here and the fellow faculty here at Stephen F. Austin State University have been really supportive. And, you know, the whole piano pedagogy community is so tightly knit there that it's not too hard to find a lot of people that uh, are, are going to be really supportive of one another um, to help you through that process. Mm, fantastic. And look, because you're such a specialist in general piano teaching technology, I wanted to ask just a few questions on teaching uh, technology in general before we go into the online teaching. And the first one was, um, what do you think is the biggest change that technology has made for piano teaching in the last five to 10 years, if you could narrow it down to one? I don't know if I could really narrow it down here, but I mean, the internet in particular has just significantly influenced the way that we educate 
others and even ourselves. Um, uh, just there's this whole now mentality that you know if you don't know how to do something, then the first instinct is to go online and. And, and try to find out how to do that there, you know, all these cooking videos that kind of scroll through our, our uh, social media feeds there, all of a sudden we think that we're uh, awesome chefs and then we're at least have the ability to do so yeah. now uh, due to all these like tasty videos and, 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 and uh, other things scrolling through our news feed. So I think in that sense, that's probably been the most significant thing that can't come, uh, come across is this whole idea that the internet – uh, has made this a uh, world a smaller place where we can share ideas and and um, disseminate information. In fact, you know, um, I, I think a lot of students are catching on now that they could probably find information a whole lot faster and much more efficiently online than they could through their traditional face-to-face -face teacher here. So I think as teachers, we need to think creatively to work with those students on how to make sense of all that information and how it can make them better musicians and better people overall. So mm, I'm no, it's, it's, it's great. And, and you know, uh, <laughs> the, the change that has come about through all the online learning and stuff. I mean, it's why I do my podcasts. It's why I write blog posts. It's why there are so many people doing those kinds of things because we know we can help people so easily when they type a question into Google, hopefully it'll pop up and we'll be able to share what we've learned. So, uh, yeah, I would tend to agree. And it's, it's going to be an interesting change just in educational generally. I'm thinking classrooms too. If students can find out pretty much what they need to know from online, our yeah. jobs as teachers change considerably, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I, I, I found a, a shift in even with my, uh, particularly with my group piano classes that I, I teach a lot of group piano classes here at Stephen F. Austin State University where we have um, – uh, we still have the uh, you know, multiple piano, digital piano lab, and students still come in twice a week there for their classes. But I've kind of uh, adopted a little bit more of a flipped classroom mentality where I do de deliver um, you know, video demonstrations of me playing through some of the technique and the repertoire. And uh, they kind of consume that at their own leisure outside of class. And then they use this, the piano lab time to, for us to actually kind of work through some of the problems that they have and uh, uh, try to uh, overcome some confusion that they have through the online delivery of content that we've, we've given them uh, in between classes. And it seems to work out uh, pretty well for most of the students here. Mm, fantastic. What would you say to teachers who are just overwhelmed with technology? Oh, well, I would say that they're not the only one there. <laughs> Um, uh, even myself, I find myself uh, overwhelmed with keeping up these days. Um, I confess that I'm uh, I'm one of those uh, people that's really reliant on products on the Apple side of <laughs> technology. So I have the utmost respect for teachers, uh, kind of like yourself, who can find the time and resources to keep up with other platform, all, all the platforms that are out there. And my advice would be how I particularly handle it is what you should only take on what you particularly feel comfortable with and what you can handle. Um, don't just implement technology just for into your teaching just for the sake of saying, hey, I've, I've implemented technology into my teaching. Um, but um, I would say uh, have a educational and or musical goal in mind um, just to, to justify it. Uh, for example, um, where I'm – most fascinated with the use of technology is um, particularly MIDI and digital audio accompaniments. Um, because part of my dissertation, dissertation uh, research, uh, the literature review showed that practicing with some any kind of rhythmic stimuli, uh, whether it be a metronome or CD accompaniments or digital audio accompaniments or MIDI accompaniments, really strengthens students' listening abilities and their rhythmic continuity and rhythmic accuracy. So I, I try to incorporate that a lot in my studio personally. Um, and uh, I feel that my students and my kids in particular show a stronger sense of rhythm. And um, it also helps simulate the collaborative piano playing that I think is so valuable for them uh, down the road. Um, and they have such a great time just because it, it 
you know, it is a much more rewarding musical experience for them uh, uh, to do that. Yeah, it's groovy. Kids, kids do love it. And, and as you say, it's, it's so important for pianists to make sure you can feel a steady beat, play to a groove, play in a group. Uh, and these are things that just don't happen without some either playing with a second piano, accompanying someone, or playing with a backing track. Uh, and we're going to talk about some of the options uh, teachers have for that shortly. Um, one quick last question just on technology generally. Um, what about the people who say that, you know, it's hard to find the pedagogy in the technology. Sometimes it just all seems to be a bit of fun and games. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, there's uh, uh, there's a lot of particular apps that have been emerging um, that kind of gamify the whole um, educational experience there, and not a lot of teachers are uh, buying into that uh, per se there. But I've seen you know positive results as far as that's concerned. I really don't have anything that I can say that I think will probably change people's minds, you know, if they really feel that way or not there. But if they've seen any of the videos that I've shared of my kids practicing and maybe performing with the technology, I think that kind of speaks a lot of itself on how the use of this technology is legitimate and in helping kids become better listeners and overall musicians for sure. Mm. It's about choosing the right app and having the right goal, I, I always think. You know, what, what are you actually trying to achieve by using this technology? It's a bit like um, I compare it to, you know, building a house and having a toolkit. Like you need to know if you're trying to put a nail in a wall, you'll grab out the hammer. That's the tool that you'll use. You, you won't grab out a saw sort of thing. And so for us as teachers, having the right tool, which is the right technology, right piece of app, what right app could be the thing that they need for that particular student to learn about rhythm or to get a groove or whatever it is. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I agree. Okay, well, let's get on to more looking at the, the online teaching side of things. Uh, are you currently teaching um, online like live lessons or do you mainly record things that people can watch later? How does your online approach work? Most, most of it is um, online lessons. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the, the group piano classes, I've kind of focused most of my attention to my students here at the university and uh, wanted to give them the best uh, experience with having that online content that they can access uh, whenever is um, you know uh, convenient for them. But um, as far as um, uh, uh, online students, I did a lot uh, uh, when I was before I was um, uh, teaching. Uh, excuse me, uh, yeah, teaching here at uh, uh, the university. Um, but then. Um, as I got a little bit busier, then didn't have quite as many. Uh, I don't know if you remember when Google had this uh, help outs service um, that they offered for a while. And I, I actually at, at my peak had quite a number of online students that I had on a regular basis. And unfortunately, that didn't succeed or <laughs> live didn't, up. To, they didn't keep to, that going, did they? Nah, no. nah, which is a shame because they had a, a really big opportunity as far as that's concerned. Um, uh, and I've met a lot of, uh, you know, like, uh, uh, really, um, uh, wonderful students there. And I still keep in contact with a couple of them here. Um, but, uh, uh, I only do some, uh, online masterclasses, uh, here and there. Um, just a couple mu- uh, earlier this year, I did an online masterclass with the uh, Oklahoma Music Teachers Association. Um, we actually did a technology where we connected these Yamaha disc clavier pianos online and, um, uh, it was a really great experience and neat just to see the kids' faces. <laughs> well, <laughs> now I saw the, I saw this, um, uh, demonstrated for the first time and it was pretty, it was pretty unbelievable. Uh, so could, t- tell us just quickly for those who haven't seen the disc clavier in action, what does this allow people to do? Yeah, well, um, what we have uh, for those who aren't viewers who aren't familiar with the Yamaha Disc Clavier, it is the 21st century um, player piano where the keys up and down, but it's all digital these days. So it has a built-in computer into it there. And what they've done is, or at least what I shouldn't say they, but there's many people behind this whole process, is that they've taken that technology where you could record and play back your performances and do that in real time by connecting the pianos with one another, either through proprietary uh, technology that's built into the Yamaha disc clavier pianos 
or also um, there's a third-party um, application that I use uh, called Internet MIDI that will connect any MIDI device, regardless if it is a, a Yamaha Disclavier player piano or if it's just a, um, a, a uh, a digital piano that doesn't have the keys move up and down, but essentially you're playing each other's instruments, which can overcome a lot of obstacles as far as uh, loss in audio and or video quality, and you get a much more faithful production of a student's performance when uh, you have this internet MIDI connection. Mm. And, and so this, this means that if I had a piano next to me here connected to the internet, that's a disc clavier, and you've got if you had one there, if you played a note there, my key would move here and I would hear the sound that you're making and I'd see the pedal move and I'd hear it exactly represented on my piano, right? Exactly. It's yeah. just it's just mind-blowing. Uh, and I'm sure <laughs> what, what we might do is try and find um, in the show notes, we'll put a, a clip or two. Uh, there's, I know there's some on YouTube of this in action. It's pretty fantastic. Um, but I imagine this is a, a, another whole step um, because it's probably quite an expensive outlay, is it, for a disc clavier piano? Yeah, for the Disclavier piano, I mean, there's different models of it there. You can go all the way up to the top of the line uh, uh, CFX uh, nine foot concert grand piano that they have some of these on there. Um, but then, of course, there's upright pianos. And then also, um, I have a, a seven foot um, uh, uh, DC uh, six uh, piano, uh, Yamaha Disclavier Pro piano. And it's one of my favorite instruments to play, not just technology is concerned but it just has a really beautiful sound to it as well there but uh, 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 I have uh, other instruments at home I have one of those uh, Yamaha NU1 hybrid pianos um, and that also is technology capable um, it has same wooden keys in action as you have on a U1 upright piano but uh, it doesn't have any strings so it's all sampled from uh, uh, the top of the line 9 foot uh, CFX concert grand piano and it doesn't need tuning. <laughs> no, no, especially here in East Texas. I don't know how the weather there is in Melbourne, but uh, 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 the humidity sometimes wrecks havoc on uh, at least the room in my house. Uh, yeah. And uh, it's it's been uh, uh, great to not have to tune that particular instrument. And so the instrument, uh, it, even though it's got all that technology in it, you can play it like a normal piano. It responds, it feels the same. You wouldn't know that it's got all that electronic gizmo, gizmo, Gizma tree, <laughs> whatever it's called, in, inside it, right? Yeah, no, no, it's it's really faithful. I mean, like the speakers on the NU1, I, I don't think they're, they went into as much detail as they have on their, let's say, the Avant Grand series. I don't know. If the Avant Grands are amazing. Uh, I, yeah, I have to say, they're pretty impressive pianos. Yeah, the NU1, the speakers are, are, are probably not on the same premium as, as those Avant Grand pianos there, but... Uh, one of the really neat things that I love about that NU1 piano is um, that you can export it to a digital audio file, a WAV file, and you can get really pristine recordings of it without any use of microphones or anything like that there. And I've actually made a couple of videos of um, my son playing in um, for these online competitions recorded on that instrument, and he's done really well on those online competitions uh, on a quote Digital upright piano. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. No, these the sounds that are coming out of them. Even even the sounds coming out of. Um, I, I really like the FP series of Roland Digitals, um, and they've got their super sound or whatever they call it. Put some headphones on, and you you really are immersed in the most amazing quality sound. So it's yeah, it's great. All right, well, let's. You've you've, you've touched on Internet MIDI. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, sure. No, uh, Internet MIDI is this application that I've used uh, for online lessons. This is if you want to give live online lessons over some type of video conferencing program, such as Skype, like what we're doing here. Um, but then what it does is um, uh, instead of having just the audio transfer through microphone through the different instruments, because you're not going to get the same kind of quality as you do, but you're actually playing each other's instruments. So then you can overcome some of those uh, compromises that we make uh, normally when giving online lessons here. It's by a company called Time Warp Technologies here in the United States. And um, uh, I've uh, gotten the opportunity to work with the developers on, on uh, uh, trying to improve on it there and for a lot of great students and have connected with a lot of students uh, uh, really well with it here. 
Okay, so so the, the advantage of this is that the sound that you hear isn't coming through Skype. It's actually going through a separate channel effectively. So you look at the person as we're doing to each other, but when we play our instrument, it's going directly through the internet and coming out the other instrument. Is that right? That's correct, yes. Yeah. Okay, so um, you avoid delay and things like that too, do you? Well, I mean, that's kind of the challenge that they, they found was that the internet um, or I should say the MIDI data tra traveling from one instrument to the other actually travels faster than, uh -huh. than the video and the audio um, uh, of a, a video conference um, such as Skype or, or any other um, uh, application such as FaceTime or anything like that. But so what they have to do is they have to intentionally, if you wanted to um, watch the video of the person playing and have it be in synchronization with the MIDI performance, they have to put an intentional delay on the MIDI data so then it doesn't get there too fast and your reality or your perception of, uh, of the student's performance or the teacher's performance, depending on which perspective this is, it looks like it's in perfect synchronization. It has what's called an automatic uh, uh, microphone muting um, uh, that you can implement into the program so that you just, you know, just ch check off that you want to automatically mute the microphones anytime any MIDI data is being sent so that whenever someone's playing, then you don't get this, um, you know, like uh, feedback. Oh, the delayed feedback, yes. Yeah, of, of like one audio source and then one MIDI source there, but then it's just this one MIDI source that's coming in and in uh, perfect synchronization with the... Um, uh, with the video, uh, and it's it's quite amazing on how they do that. Yeah. Okay. So, what do teachers need to use uh, to to get set up with that if they wanted to teach online lessons and they want to try this internet MIDI thing because they've heard that the delays and the sound is the thing that is often hardest about getting a good lesson. What what do they need? Uh, well, number one, they would need a, um, a MIDI capable piano, um, and again, it could be an acoustic. Um, uh, piano with MIDI capabilities like the Yamaha Disclavier, um, or it could be a, a digital piano, uh, Roland, Casio, um, uh, anything that has MIDI capabilities to it there that you would connect to your computer there. They don't have it available for iPad or any uh, mobile devices yet, so you do need a, a computer for it here, um, uh, whether it be a Mac or a Windows um, um, and I believe, I don't believe they have it for Android yet, but, uh, um, okay. but still, um, uh, yeah, you do need the computer and, a, a, a digital, uh, a MIDI capable piano. Okay. And so the piano connects to, so let's say using a MacBook, a, a laptop of some sort, the MIDI out goes into the USB, goes onto the laptop. There's the software, the internet MIDI software goes on there, uh, hooks up with Skype somehow, does it, or does it just run alongside? Yeah, sure. Let me show you uh, a little. Yeah, you run both applications at the same time, both the Skype and the Internet MIDI here. Let me see if I could um, pull up uh, that uh, Internet MIDI here. Uh, sorry, I should have got this up. No, that's okay. Second. But uh, find Internet MIDI here. And uh, got here's. It. You got it there? Yep. All right. Um, actually, let me do... So if people uh, are listening on iTunes, this could be this is probably an episode you want to have a look on the video because Mario is now sharing his screen and I think you've got to do that a little bit later too so you can actually see some of this software in action just so you know what's going on while we, <laughs> while we stop talking. Okay. Um, so, yeah, this is the Internet MIDI um, interface here. Um, uh, as you can see... Um, oops, I have to change one setting on my disk here. Hold on. And you'll see that there's a MIDI input device here, and that's my disk clavier. So that could just uh, be a digital piano of some sort with MIDI. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, um, well... And whenever I play a key on my piano, now I can see that it's showing on this online screen here. I can even push the pedals up and down there. So it's viewing up there as well. Yep. 
then there's these different um, buttons up top here. This is the um, uh, uh, the internet connection view or the the globe view. And just like we have screen names for like Skype and uh, other applications, uh, you create a buddy name. Uh, my name, if anyone ever wants to connect with me, is Mario. Yeah. <laughs> I, I you got in on. early. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then you create a password and then uh, we do that here. Uh, ha uh, you could also connect um, th directly through IP addresses, um, but most people like to use the buddy uh, system of just you know uh, creating a buddy name and then you go th to various people here. Uh, this is Pete Jutras <laughs> oh, yeah. from University of, George <laughs> University of Georgia there. So if I wanted to connect with him, obviously he's not online here, but if he was online, we would see this button be green. Oh, be and green, the, yeah. Okay, so would... so that and that technology, that just runs in the background. And then so you get all that set up, you connect to each other, and then you go to your Skype and you just you start teaching your lesson effectively, right? Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. Wow, that's pretty cool. That's really, really cool. Um, so this is called Internet MIDI. It's on. It's by Time Warp Tech, I think is right. Do you know? Correct. Do you know approximately the price? Is it a, a one-off price, a subscription? Yeah, How does it work. No, it's just a, a one-off price here. I believe it's uh, sixty-nine US dollars. Okay. Uh, and um, and then there's also a Classroom Maestro plugin. Um, that goes along uh, with it. Well, I think you might have to buy the Classroom Maestro as a separate plugin to work with it here. But I've used it um, mainly in my group piano lab, and that's how they originally conceived Nernet MIDI was yeah. as um, a group piano lab uh, um, a visualizer in order for you to, um, you know, uh, show what the teacher is playing at the front of the classroom there. They would play that there, and then um, it would show up both on the staff and also on the keyboard itself. So it helps save a lot of time there. But then I found that they found out that it works just as great in an online environment as it does in a um, in a group, in a group piano class. Lab. Mm. So I've used it a lot in my YouTube videos, um, just open-ended lessons for. Uh, 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 for students there just to cover some basic um, fundamentals of piano and then just some maybe some um, basic chord progressions that are commonly used in a lot of popular songs there. What's kind of neat about it, it has an, an analysis view here and it's pretty easy. You just put a type in a keyboard shortcut of A for analysis here so then you can show oh, yeah. different chord progressions there. Hmm. You shows both um, lead sheet chord symbols, but then also can do, oops, I'm in the wrong key signature. <laughs> oh, I'm in the, there we go. <laughs> yeah, got it. Uh, it can do Roman the numeral Roman numeral style. style. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Can, it, can it have more than one? Because whenever you play something, it disappears. Can it, can it stay on the screen and can you do a series of five chords or something? Uh, yeah, uh, it's been a while since I've done that there. Let me see. I think it's chord progression mode, although I don't know if it's on this particular. I might have an older version here. Mm -hmm. Let me just double check. Yeah, I might not have the most updated one, but they did have a um, uh, a newer version that does d display multiple chords um, in sequence. Yeah. of one another. So you can show the chord progression here as well. There's even a scale mode. Um, so then I can just push the caps lock key and then I say, all right, a student, can you play? Then, whoops, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I activated my smart program here. What sorry. was that? <laughs> <laughs> that's spoiling the party here. Wow. Sorry. There we go. <laughs> No, that's it's supposed to be in a B major Ionian scale. There, beautiful, so, um, beautiful. Now, so people who are, are watching or are listening, if you're still listening, um, yeah, check it out. This this is uh, all showing up on screen. There's a keyboard view and there's a view on the stave, and it's analysing what he's doing. So when he's playing a chord, it's actually telling you what chord it is. I think this could be brilliant for, as you say, not just online lessons, but for group anyone doing group lessons. Brilliant. Pop this on the screen at the front. I what I love about it is that I, I've been using this application probably for about 10 years now, and I'm still, you know, I'm still, like, trying to discover, like, uh, new scales and things like that there. I'm trying to, uh, trying to see if 
find a, a, a good one here. Um, there we go. There's oh, the. There you go. Uh, if you ever wanted to teach the F Raga Simharava. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, that's that's great. Okay. So, so, there. <laughs> so this software is called Classroom Maestro. And this is um, a separate separate application. So you don't have to use it with Internet MIDI. You can use it on its own, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, and it's yeah. also by Time Warp Tech. That is correct. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I've even, you know, the most basic modes they have are note mode. So if you wanted to drill just as kind of like quick flashcards here on note identification here, um, uh, you know, it, it does that as well. Um, so it has like a note mode, chord mode, um, scale mode, lots of, lots of really neat modes. And what's kind of neat here is um, in Internet MIDI, what you, I, I've done with some students in the past there is when we're working on building chords, you know, I, I ask them, you know, there's my um, C major chord and you don't have the Internet MIDI application there, but let's say you were... Uh, on that end, I, I could ask them on your piano, could you play a note that would make it a dominant seventh chord and they could play one note on their end and then it will add on to, so we both have the same access to the Classroom Maestro program. Ah, okay. So you would see your notes light up and my note, whatever I add to it. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and, and, and Classroom Maestro would then realize it's a dominant seventh chord or whatever. Yeah. Wow. Fantastic. <laughs> the uh, the technology is great. I mean, I, I use Classroom Maestro when I put together my um, piano flicks, my pop teaching uh, training package, which was three or four years ago, uh, and I just loved it. And lots of people ask me about it because uh, it just it is just such a great way to show people what's actually going on on the piano. Yeah, definitely. Um, now there is another way to do that, of course, and that's with having lots of different cameras everywhere. Uh, so this could be a good little segue into some of the ways that you can use different cameras, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, when I was doing a lot of the uh, um, uh, online teaching for uh, Google Helpouts uh, earlier there, one of the things that I think uh, kind of made me one of the more uh, uh, popular uh, uh, online piano teachers was my uh, kind of doing some things as far as with the online environment that I don't think uh, – a lot of other piano teachers were doing and that one of those was with multiple camera angles here because one of my philosophies as far as um, giving online lessons is you want to try to do your best with the limited resources that you have to try to create an experience that is at least as good uh, if not even better than what you would have in a face-to-face -face lesson here and um, uh, if I can find my cam twist uh, preferences here. Whoops. Where's my, here's my main window here. So I have a preset here or look, let me do a screen sharing here of my, um, oops, hold on a second. Uh, oh, not that. <laughs> Whoa. No, that's cool. <laughs> that's a little bit too trippy there. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. I can see your keyboard so here. Um, yeah, I have an overhead camera of my, uh, uh, that I have mounted on, well, it's probably better that I do show you first. Uh, and I'm controlling this all in another application called Cam Twist. And if you can't see here, I have a Logitech uh, webcam. Uh, I am, you are seeing this, right? Yes, I am. Yeah, yeah. It's, ex it's yeah. the same camera that I'm looking at right now, too. They are brilliant, okay. really good. <laughs> Yeah, it's the Logitech C920, I think. There, um, there's probably even better webcams out there, but it seems to do the trick for, for, for what I need to do is, and that's just a secondary camera because I like having this kind of side view so that they can see, you know, like proper hand position, uh, uh, the side view as you would as if you had two pianos um, next to one another there. But then I like to also have the Logitech um, camera, and it's on this um, boom microphone stand. And then I don't know if you could see above that there is just this uh, adapter that uh, um, oh, I don't even know what you call it there as far as. It's like a micro my phone clip camera adapter or something. Yeah, it's, it's, it, what it does, it has the, the threaded um, 
uh, adapter so that you can mount the the Logitech uh, camera or any video camera for that matter um, uh, to to that microphone stand. So um, I actually got this from uh, some of my friends at Yamaha who had, had done this for some of the concerts of some live uh, uh, broadcast that they have done there. And I, I was wondering, well, hey, how do you get that awesome <laughs> over the head shot <laughs> yeah. there? You know, without without a whole lot of masking type holding stuff together, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, it's not the most eloquent thing in the world here, but you know, for for the online lessons, it seemed to work out just fine here. Yeah, we'll try and pop a link to where you can grab grab one of those into the show notes too. Sure. And um, let me show now with Cam Twist. What is great is, whoops, let me get rid of one of those there. So now I think you have two camera angles now. Ah, uh, yeah, perfect. Wow, it looks really good. Looks really so sharp. So that way, too. so if I'm demonstrating something at the piano, I can, you know, like. Um, I can have the multiple camera angles there so that it addresses the students who do they need. Um, you know, for some students, it might be information overload, but I found that uh, it, it kind of hits. All cylinders here. You get the multiple uh, angles of you know proper hand position, and then also the correct fingering to go along with that. There, if I wanted to go even further with that, there, let me uh, do one more, one of my other favorite camera angles, and that's just to triple it up here. Wow! So then now I can do the um, both the classroom maestro the the um, the online keyboard, the staff, and the, <laughs> and all of that, and then hopefully, you know, I don't have to repeat something over and over again. I just need to. Wow, that is that is once, really good. And if they missed it, then they can always rewind, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So we can now see on the screen uh, the overhead view. We can see Mario from the side. We can see the stave. And the keyboard, the digital keyboard with the notes lighting up. You know, you, as, as you say, I think you said earlier something about we should be making online lessons even more impressive than the in-person lessons, uh -huh. uh, or, or at least as as impressive. And I think this is this is the kind of thing that can go a step further because, of course, um, students can record the whole lesson pretty easily and come mm -hmm. back to it over and over. Or a teacher could record a lesson that could then be shared to a whole number of students on a particular topic. And, you know, looking like that is just so professional and so clear. I think it's brilliant. Yeah, no, no. Um, uh, a lot of it is just to, you know, uh, I did it. Um, part of it I, was just a lot of my experimentation, again, with some of those initial YouTube videos that I had done back in the mid-2000s there of just experimenting, and it was kind of clunky on the way how I had to uh, record one angle and then record a different angle and then um, show show the uh, show a screen capture of, of the chord progression on the staff in another one here and now I just kind of knock out these lessons um, and and um, it really cuts down the time and the tediousness of it here yeah and so just to can just to sort of um, summarize what we've got to we've we've bought with to, to do what you're doing now we've had to buy a few things we've we've bought internet mini which is software to connect the keyboards over the internet we've got an application called classroom maestro we've got um a couple of webcams or maybe you're using are you fa the camera you're facing now on the side is that your inbuilt webcam in the computer yeah, that one's just my uh, built-in webcam or the, the FaceTime camera on my MacBook Pro and then the one uh, mounted above uh, yep. up here yeah. <laughs> is, um, is the Logitech uh, C920 uh, webcam. It's a, a little bit older but uh, still does the trick. Yeah, beautiful. And so you've, really, you've actually only bought one webcam other than what's already in your computer and you've bought software to allow you to switch between the different views. Now, in your case, you've said Cam Twist, and I've yeah, also Cam heard of another one called Minicam. There's probably others. Yeah. In fact, uh, Cam Twist, I believe, is a free download. Actually. Oh, there you go. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> Even better. Um, and I think that's it, right? 
and the, and the microphone stand if you want to go well do all that. If you wanted to yeah improve the microphone right now I'm using the um uh built-in microphone on my MacBook Pro but uh if you don't think that this uh audio quality is is suitable for you, you know, I'm sure you have a lot of uh wonderful microphones that you could probably recommend. No, yep, got this one in front of me which I can you can see on my screen now. That's what I use for the podcasting, but it looks it sounds perfectly clear where you are. Um, really? Oh. Yeah. And so the only other thing was the actual microphone stand that holds the webcam over the top, Amazon, yeah. would be what? I mean, I can see that one looks pretty sturdy. It looks like a pretty strong one. Yeah, this one is called On Stage Stands. Uh, it's sold by, I think, a company here in the United States, uh, uh, Sweetwater Music. I think they 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 were the ones that I got that. And there was also a little adapter on, on um, that I needed to um, purchase and I think I also got that from Sweetwater Music. I can send you the links to those if you want to yeah, that'd share. Be great. We'll, we'll pop them in the show notes. Uh, and I'm sure Amazon, you know, if people in Australia, for example, it's much easier often buying on somewhere like Amazon. So um, yeah, we'll find some links and we'll pop them on the show notes page. That is just such a great summary of what is possible um, because in the first uh, session in this series, uh, episode 52 with Melody Payne, we really talked about how you can start simply so, Mario, you've just taken it to the next level of actually what is possible without too much expense. And yeah. while it might would probably take some time to get your head around how it all works and getting a screen set up, um, I imagine with a little bit of experience, it wouldn't be that hard. No, no, there's going to be a lot of, you know, that's one thing that um, teachers have to keep in mind. They're, you're going to, just just like when you're learning a new piece, you're going to mess up here and yeah. you're going to make mistakes and things are going to, feel a little bit frustrating there but you know you have to approach it just the way that you you have all your students and yourself uh, approaching learning learning some new music here is you, you just got to keep working at it there until you find you know that you know sweet spot where you're comfortable working in this particular type of environment here mm. okay so i want to kind of start wrapping up soon but uh, it might be worth talking about a, a new score reading app that um, I know you've been involved in the development of, and that's SuperScore. Um, is it worth just telling, just mentioning quickly sort of what that's about so that people could find out more if they're interested? Yeah, sure. Um, what it is, it's a um, digital music reading uh, app. Um, uh, it, it uses the music XML format um, as it's, um, as how it, um, uh, displays the music notation. So a lot of it is initially proprietary uh, and you buy the music within the app here. There's a lot of uh, uh, composers and authors ha that have jumped aboard uh, on early here. Um, I don't know if, sorry, we don't have like a fancy screen sharing for this That's here. Okay. But I can say that. Uh, uh, the Funky Beat by Bradley Sowash, who I know you're quite familiar with here. Sure, yeah. Um, and again, um, What's uh, what is unique about the super score format as opposed to PDFs? You know, when you pinch and zoom on a PDF file, there, then you, you know, you uh, just kind of zoom in on that particular um, measure here. What the super score does pretty neatly is that if I zoom in, it will redraw the screen in such a way to optimize the screen, whether it be you know like landscape view or uh, or um, portrait view as well here, and um, and what's different about it is that it's uh, it takes all that information just just like slurs and chord symbols and redraws it in a really slick, uh, quick fashion that makes it easy on the eyes, particularly. Mm. Like so, whatever the eyes are there, and since it's, it is music XML data, what they also have is certain pieces like this by Bradley Sowash has like MIDI data incorporated with it, so that you could actually play in synchronization with a backing track along with it, and it will even turn pages along with you. And uh, if you have it hooked up to a MIDI capable piano like the one that I have here, then we can actually play in synchronization. It will follow the the um, students playing uh, so that when they speed up or slow down, then it will speed up and slow down. So it's it's kind of this interactive um, score. And just like the 
name of that application says. It's uh, not just a score. It's a, it's a super, super score. score. <laughs> and, and that I remember that was one of the features of Home Concert Extreme, that follow mode, which I thought was incredibly clever. And Home Concert Extreme was was another a, a play along effectively app that listened to what you were doing. So now this is just taking that to another level in many exactly. ways. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I think what, what you're eventually going to see is uh, eventually those two applications merge with one another. I still use Home Concert Extreme extensively with my students here. Um, the thing about SuperScore is that instead of it taking MIDI data, it's taking like um, data from uh, uh, music XML files, ones that are generated through um, notation programs such as Finale, Sibelius, and other uh, notation programs so that it looks much more eloquently on screen than it does on Home Concert Extreme, which Home Concert Extreme does probably the best job that any application can do on taking MIDI data and making it into music notation here. But here, composers and publishers have much more control over what they can show on uh, on screen as well here. It's a great looking score. Uh, are you able yeah. to demonstrate just like a, a mi- like how, how the actual play along thing works or is it not set up for that at the moment? Yeah, sure. I can yeah. show that. Yeah, you awesome. don't, if you got time for it there and if you don't mind indulging one of my little kids here to uh, help demonstrate it here. Yeah, let, here. let's do it. It's, it's only a few minutes, isn't it? <laughs> okay. So we'll do this uh, funky beat here by Bradley Sowash here. And what I'll do here, let me just make sure my um, my MIDI is set up correctly here because it was connected to my piano, excuse me, to the computer a second ago. I have to make one quick change here. Who's who's and, performing today? Oh well, I got Olivia here. Awesome. And, and who, who, who I met when she was about <laughs> half the size. Hello, Olivia. How are you? Good. <laughs> Lovely to see you. Thanks for helping us out today. Sure. So, um, what's kind of neat here? What one thing that you'll notice, Tim? Here, by the way, is there's no wires involved here. Um, it's all wireless. Um, on the disc clavier piano, I have uh, uh, actually a uh, uh, a Bluetooth uh, MIDI interface, and that's one of been one of the um, uh, uh, challenges as far as MIDI is concerned. Is you have to have all these interfaces and wires here, and um, there's this one by I I believe it's a Japanese company, Quico, um, that uh, a friend of mine gifted to me, and I got the chance to try it out, and it works quite amazingly. Where you would think there would be some latency or at least noticeable latency involved. But uh, I, I don't notice it when, when we're connected here. So, Olivia, could you um, show Tim how we get into the uh, Bluetooth MIDI here? Let's uh, can you first uh, get us out of full screen here. So easy a seven-year-old can do. <laughs> Very intelligent seven-year-old, though. You go to the gear box, and she's going to... I'm going to narrate this here. It says add Bluetooth MIDI device and it recognizes the M1 Quico device. And she's going to, is it say connected or, oh, it is already connected there. Okay. So then I guess we're already connected then. So let's do that there. And do we have the M1 Bluetooth selected? Yes, it's already selected. So go ahead and click done. All right. Now at the bottom, oops, I'm going to see if I can do this. Yep. So you can see. See, it's put on jam mode. We're just going to do the jam mode here. And what it's going to do, it's going to activate all the sounds that you're going to hear are not coming from the iPad. It's actually coming from the disc clavier's uh, internal tone generator. Right. So uh, it's, again, no no wires uh, connected here. So if you didn't have the disc clavier, would the backing track sounds come out of the iPad in that case? Um. You, you could set it up to do either. You could have it play either through the iPad itself or if you have a digital piano. Um, and it doesn't have to be a disc clavier. It could be uh, some other um, digital piano. As long as it has general MIDI um, capabilities and uh, a general uh, MIDI bank of sounds, then it can play back some of these tracks like uh, Bradley Sowash has created for this uh, funky beat here. Cool. So, All right. Wanna- 
And I don't know if you could see it on your screen here. There's like a little green cursor that uh, kind of goes along on the screen that shows where she's at here. And uh, let me go through two different camera angles here so you get the full effect here. Oops. There's my switch over to oops. Oh, too much information here. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Okay, Damn. Olivia, Funky Beats by Bradley Sowash. playing olivia that was really great thank you so much take a bow <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's okay. yeah. thank you thank you Thanks, <laughs> that's awesome thanks mario that's great really really cool and we could still we could hear the backing track and everything so um i'll make, I'll make sure uh bradley gets to see that and give his stamp of approval as i know he will um, oh, yeah. that's brilliant thank you so much for showing all this stuff in action uh it's great just to see how far this technology has come and some of those options that are out there for teachers who want to go and take it a step up from just let's Skype to, well, here's what you can actually do. And that's exactly what I hoped you would show us. So thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought I'd finish with just a last couple of questions quickly. Do you have just a couple of, couple of tips for making online teaching successful, leaving aside the technology so much perhaps? Uh, are there a few ways of approaching your actual teaching that can really help that you've learned? Um, yeah. I mean, as far as on the technical side, I, I tried to tell teachers to try to eliminate as many variables of things that could potentially go wrong. You know, there's, <laughs> I'm kind of doing the exact opposite. Yeah, I know. I was going to say, you know, don't do this, all this stuff. at home. Mario is a <laughs> professional. <laughs> but but no, um, to be honest here, you know, it's it's taken quite a number of years just to kind of figure out, oh, yeah, well, this could work with this. Oh, well, this could work with that there. So, but um, at the same time, you know, when you're dealing with a live online lesson, um, we're dealing with, um, you know, there's a, a greater risk of something could potentially go wrong as far as like a, a bad connection. So try to eliminate as many variables or at least control for as many variables as you possibly can. You know, the way, you know, I, I know it's not, uh, well, maybe it is easy for us to kind of connect with one another here um, uh, through uh, from United States to Australia here. But, you know, I want to make sure that this, this works here. So then I make sure that uh, I'm on the best Internet connection possible, got off of the Wi-Fi, went to the hardwired uh, Internet, which is much more reliable here. And hopefully it's come across nice and crystal clear uh, from on your end here. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the same thing here as far as like uh, when you're trying to set up a lesson there, try to uh, eliminate as ver- many variables as you can there. And as I mentioned earlier, try to handle, you know, take on what you can handle at first there and then reevaluate after a particular lesson, you know, like, oh, I wish the audio was better here. Well, let me see if I could, you know, get a new microphone. Oh, I wish I had a better uh, video quality. Well, let's let's see if we can add a camera here or oh, I wish I could see in the student's hands. Well, see if the student can get that, uh, you know, like overhead cam there that might make the experience better so it's it's a continually evolving process and if there's any um you know like if you're a a true professional teacher then i I think we already have kind of like in our dna um 
what it takes to succeed in these particular endeavors. And that's just to kind of continually working at it and reevaluating and then and keep plugging away at it. Mm. And if you happen to be listening to this episode before episode 52, then maybe listen to episode 52, which was real, the, the slightly simpler approach to, uh, to actually teaching online. So try that one. And then when you're ready to step up, definitely try all these things. So we're going to put links in the show notes to all of the things we've been talking about today. Last question, what's one piece of tech you couldn't live without and why? Oh, wow. I mean, uh, if you ask me this, like maybe 10 or maybe even just five years ago, I would say definitely my, um, uh, my notebook computer. Um, I've kind of moved away from desktop computers. I don't think I've owned a desktop computer in maybe 10 or 15 years. I don't so, know if they're uh, making them anymore, are they? <laughs> <laughs> I think they got them. They're around there. But uh, I, I usually find that uh, um, this it's my bread and butter and able to handle all these different types of applications. You know, there's some really great things emerging with um, – mobile devices such as iPads and iPhones and wonderful applications as far as that's concerned. But, you know, with doing all these um, online, you know, video editing and um, uh, working with smart accompaniments and um, uh, uh, creating online lessons and lesson planning for my um, uh, group piano classes, um, my notebook computer or my MacBook Pro computer uh, still is my uh, workhorse and, and gets gets things done there. But um, those times are a change in here. You know, I, I took a trip to Europe and I didn't think I could leave home without my <laughs> my computer uh, uh, to to go to Europe there. But uh, I, I took the the plunge without it there. And but then I did take you, an you, iPad. You made it. You made it. Oh, you took the iPad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was at least able to. Know, feel some sort of connection with people there, um, uh, with that there, but uh, and, and that might change. Yeah, still within five or ten years, there maybe you know this iPad Pro that I just got uh, a couple months ago um, is really amazing piece of technology here, and I could see that in the, you know like in maybe a few years it could potentially be a replacement for my computer. I know it is for a lot of users, and that's that's perfectly fine there, but. Mm. Uh, um, but yeah, this is yeah this is the uh, main piece of technology. Although I love playing with a whole bunch of toys here, as you can see. We know, yeah, absolutely. Well, look, I think we better sign off there. Thank you so much for your time, Mario. It's been brilliant to catch up with you, and it's also been brilliant to learn from you. Really appreciate it. Yeah, sure. It's been a great pleasure here. Thanks a lot, Tim. All right, we'll catch you again really soon. See you later. Okay. Bye. Bye. If the idea of a piano teacher's community where you get to access the best educational resources, rub shoulders with expert teachers from around the world, and have immediate access to feedback for any of your questions, then Inner Circle membership is for you. The Inner Circle is my private community of piano teachers from across the globe who share a commitment to creating and delivering the most inspiring, modern, and progressive learning experiences for their students. Membership is now open, so head to timtopham.com forward slash community to find out more and get involved today. I can't wait to see you on the inside.